Hello everyone, it is your host Cyber and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys on how to improve your cloud gaming experience and being able to get rid of latency and controller input latency at the same time. Now, before we get started, if you guys have any questions regarding on how to set up this, whether if you whether if you need help setting it up, you can go in the comment section and ask. Either I can help you or someone else in the community can decide to help you. Or if you're also really interested, there are also subreddits that actually can help you set this up. I've had issues with my router in the past because I had no idea what to do with it. But what to do with, with it in the settings and how to set up the certain specific things. So Reddit is a really good, useful website to, to ask your question and get answers immediately. So if you if you want to need help, you can either do it in the comments or do it on, on Reddit. Either way works fine. So I'm gonna show you guys on that about my gaming experience. So I'm gonna launch. I usually uh, play two games. I stream two of the games that I own that I want to play. I don't own, but I play through consoles. And it's cloud gaming. So the two I play is right now. I'm playing right now is Sniper Elite 4 and Rainbow Six Extraction. I can't download Rainbow Six Extraction onto through Game Pass, but unfortunately, there's an ongoing bug with Ubisoft that's preventing me or maybe other players from playing the game because they say that I already already own the game. <laughs> it's it, kind of weird, doesn't isn't it? Isn't it? Um, so if I click on Sniper Elite 4, which I'm going to do, and I click play, you're going to notice that it's immediately going to launch. It's going to launch the game. This is going to have it's going to be super fast. And the great thing about um, what I'm going to teach you is that there's going to remove all that latency. And I'm going to show you guys by this going into the game, just loading up the game, loading up the first the mission that I'm currently on because I've actually done two missions so far. We're going to go single player, continue campaign. And just remember when you cloud game, when well, on Xbox Game Pass, you're playing on an Xbox Series X slash S. I think the Xbox Series X games. But you can see no latency. I'm but this is for my controller. I have my controller connected, and you can see if I if I just tap it, it immediately responds with no very little latency. If I move around or run, I don't see any input or like lag. You see the quality of the game looks maxed out, and it looks beautiful. The only problem with cloud gaming, I would say, for a lot of people is that whenever you try to cloud game for the first time, and even with the good, either if you have good or bad internet, you're always gonna suffer some kind of latency. How can you improve that, and how can I get rid, how can you get rid of those latency issues and being able to stream games online? It's pretty simple and it's pretty easy, and it all it requires is a router with QoS. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna X out this game. I'm gonna X out this game. And we're going to show you. So if you head over to your internet browser and you type in routerlogin.net if you have that gear. Others may be 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.0.1. So right now I have my router connected to a, a Cox modem, which does not support QoS. Which kind of sucks, doesn't it? When you have Cox, which is C-O-X, not the other word. The C O X, uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, if you have a dirty mind, I'm not trying to put it that way. I'm just that's how that's an actual provider. Um, basically, they have you can rent their, their their own personal router, and you can basically get internet that way through gaming. However, they don't have Q O S, and what Q O S is is basically a feature called quality of service. Q O S is short for that for that name, and allow basically. It, you can test your internet speed, and depending on what your internet speed is right here, which you can see mine right here, it basically takes a portion of that of your internet, half of your internet speed, and or a portion of your internet speed, and allocates it for streaming, 4K games, stuff like that, anything that's media, media like streaming, like streaming games, streaming movies, streaming videos, anything like that, regardless of video entertainment or streaming, is going to help out a lot. And the reasons why you, this is also useful because if your router has this feature, it's going to improve your game cloud gaming experience by a whole lot. Now I tried both ways. I have tried QoS off because it was the down advantage, down, down advantage 
of using QoS is that you yes you get a you get a bit of boost in media and, and streaming, but the your your download speed gets cut in half, and that's that can be if you require a, a, a fat, huge blazing fast speeds, just get ready because if you use QoS, this, the downfall is it's going to limit to like probably 300, 400 megabytes per second. Now, my, my estimation when I test my speeds last night, I was getting about roughly 385 megabytes per second down and 35 megabytes up and megabytes per second up. And 35 megabytes per second up is actually the the average that my internet speed is actually getting. The problem, the, the only problem with QoS is just, it just splits it in half. So you have 300 megabytes per, um, for each person who's connected to the router, so, and that may that may vary because the changes can change always. So it's not always going to be there, and you'll always want to take you always want to make sure that your database is up to date. You want to make sure you take take a speed test at least once a week, so this way QoS can actually define the actual and allocate the actual accurate uh, megabytes per second needed. Or bandwidth needed for media streaming. What are you getting? So, why do you need this? And is it important? Yes, it is important. It, you don't need necessarily need this. You can actually play the game without QoS. The only difference between using QoS, it helps a ton, especially if you are experiencing late, lots of latency. Now. If you don't recall, Play Us Now it has been featured in many places, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna specifically mention Linus Tech Tips. There was a video that he created talking uh, about latency, and I forgot which video it was, so I can't list link it into the video description, description, so or find it for you. But um, you can probably find it on their channel, and it's basically he tried to he he had a segment of latency, and he tried PS Now. I have no idea whether if he was using QoS or whether or not. So I can't put those um, facts or figures into the equation. But when he tested the PS Now, he had latency. He had latency. I think it was GeForce Now he was chasing you. Because GeForce Now improved a lot and he wanted to try all of them. So he tried PS Now and it was well, it was running really terrible. He kept getting latency issues. It was very, the quality kept dipping. It just was not perfect and that, that that was the the final straw for me specifically to ever want to go to ps now because even though ps now is useful for in many cases especially now that you can stream them through via via pc it is not worth it they're worth the money to even consider playing ps now however if you would have combined that if he would have had qos enabled on his router then his probably streaming experience may be even better because it doesn't matter whether if you have fiber, it doesn't matter whether you have cable or it doesn't matter if you pay for the highest tier internet connection. We pay at one gigabyte per second. So I get the best speeds and I shouldn't have any latency issues without this enabled. But unfortunately this has as an ISP issue. So it is not my fault. <laughs> If that per se. So I enable when you enable QoS, it just basically it take your router goes into hardcore mode. I'm gonna put, call it hardcore mode, and just basically cuts in your internet cut your, your your internet speed by half, allocating a certain set portion for media streaming, game streaming, and the rest for miscellaneous misc reasons like surfing or or anything like that, or gaming online or something like that. I don't know how it works with gaming. I don't know if it improves. With game latency, I haven't tested that yet, but um, I'm pretty sure this helps a lot with a lot of people. So if you don't have, if you don't have a feature of QoS in your router, the best thing you can do is to, if you have a provider that gives you a router to to use as an internet connection, log into your into your uh, into your uh, into your your uh, internet connection or your router and it'll be displayed like this or in a web page like if I go to 192.168.0.1 it takes me to the my my Cox login if I go in here I have it in bridge mode so it won't and that's not necessarily 
it won't really do anything. It won't show anything. As you see, I have it in, I have it in bridge mode because I don't want double NAT. So, so if you have, if you're if you look at your router and you access your router and you have you see you see no QoS, then that means you're gonna have an issue with streaming um, games. And that's a that's a really big thing that I don't really like about the Cox Microx modem is because it it didn't support that feature. And even though it would be nice because it is this is designed for also well for gaming as well, media streaming and stuff like that. But this doesn't offer a lot of features that my new router has, which is Wi-Fi 6 compatible. And this one doesn't. So I put it in bridge mode and basically I have my new router, which has QoS, which basically every device in this in my household goes toward through that. And then the Cox router is just to have everything turned off, Wi-Fi, everything like that. And it has no, I had turned off the firewall for this one specifically because all the firewalls being really mainly handled by my main router. So if they would have to, it would just go through here and then hit my main router if anything would have happened. Um, so once you go through there, um, once you, you figure out, once you um, see if QoS is available in your router, because all routers are different, most, all, mostly to all Netgear routers, I know by hard, has a QoS feature. So you're able to enable them. Um, but you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to do that simply by just doing that. If you don't have one, I would suggest going out and buying a router, um, a Netgear router gaming, like a Nighthawk um, um, router and that has two OS. And then once you get that, because you get that into the mail, you set it up, you install it, you set up your password, your SSID, all that, that good stuff. Then it makes sure you test your speeds uh, within the router if it supports that feature and then enable QoS. So this way it auto manages and you don't have to do anything beyond um, just setting it up, turning it, the, the mode on, and then you'll be gone. It'll be, it's like an instant thing. So once you turn on QoS, before you launch your streaming game, turn it on first and then launch the, the, stream, the game you want to stream and then you're off to the races. And I think it's pretty, pretty darn well because it's, it's going to help not only benefit you, but it's also going to benefit your family members as well when they want to, when they want to watch media content and not having to deal with buffering and shit because the worst thing to happen is having buffering happen and that could be annoying. <laughs> Either way, I hope you guys thought that was, this information was very useful. I showed you proof that it does work. Um, and trust me, I've used this service without it. I used Xbox Game Pass without it. And before, every time I turned it off, I would just have the worst experience because I would get low quality. I would get still get latency issues with my controller. And it's just a bad experience. So if you're having an issue with streaming a game regardless if it's from PS Now or Xbox Game Pass, or even if it's just streaming from, from Google Stadia, this is a good option, and this is a good opportunity to do this so far. So either way, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.